Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. I'm so glad you're here, you guys. We are wrapping up Lady C's book. I have so much enjoyed this. So today will probably be our final episode. We'll see how we do, but um, it'll be chapter 10, and then we have the prologue, and then we have something called plates. So we're going to take a look at all of that and discuss it and wrap this up. I've so enjoyed covering this book, and I hope you have enjoyed it as well. Again, I've Skim through parts as I wanted to hit the highlights. You can find my complete coverage of the original book in a separate series of videos. These are the highlights of all the new stuff added. I do recommend the book as there are parts where she really spends more time than I have explaining things. Um, but again, it's her work, so I'm trying to summarize as much as I can rather than read directly from and I, again, I can't say enough good stuff about it. I really have enjoyed it. It's obvious she's put a lot of work into this. I was disappointed when Tom Bauer re-released his book because there really wasn't anything too juicy added. This has been all kinds of juice added, and I've really enjoyed it, and I hope you have too. But let's, let's dive right back into this. Uh, what is this? Part nine of the series. Um, and uh, we'll finish this up. Thanks for being here. I'm Jen. Honk, honk, everyone. This time we're picking up on chapter 10. And I've called this part of the book Royals for Sale because Lady C goes into Megxit. Um, now, remember, the original book came out in like 2019. So this a lot of this, of course, has been added on since talking about Harry and Meghan and the the good they thought they would do and by that mostly financial gain that they thought they would make by leaving the royal family um, and what a flop it's been since then. And when we talk about this please do look at the pictures in the background because this time I decided to focus on the ones where She's the center of attention, and he's a pouty bitch. So, <laughs> so enjoy that. <laughs> Mostly, you'll see her like Cheshire catting the camera, and he looks miserable. So, let's talk about that. But uh, all right, let's keep going with this book. But I got the royals for sale because of a line out of this part of the book. Um, I mean, to put it simply, Lady C states they became royals for sale. And after a while, royals with little to offer except themselves. And those selves have proven to have diminishing desirability. You know, I think that's really funny and interesting to see it play out in real time. Because again, we're in the midst of this, she's selling jam <laughs> of it all, right? I, I just keep thinking about that, the jam, going from the royal family to selling jams and, and claiming to want to do all this good, but it seems to be more about financial benefit and nothing else is working. So she's selling jam. I truly don't understand how her ego is where it's at when, when you really look at how far they've fallen and, and same with him too. I mean, he's still a smug prick as ever. And I don't, I really don't understand why or how. So the other part of this book that I find so fascinating is how Lady C explains exactly what we've all seen. Basically in the years since they've, they've left, they've been quote, mining Di Diana's legacy for all it's worth. <laughs> so basically they keep bringing up his mother's death. And um, as a result, they've been accused of quote, besmirching her memory. So Lady C goes into Megan just, <laughs> she's been accused of forging links where there appear to be none. Her bizarre claims of channeling Diana. I, I've, ugh, I've brought this up as well. He even, I, I blame him just as much, sometimes more with the, he, he talks about in his book, Diana's Stardust, that Megan has Diana's Stardust. I'm like, not ever. <laughs> I just don't understand how he can be this idiotic and, and blind, apparently. But um, I guess this ties into how they'll do pretty much anything for money. And so Lady C's pointing out, including, again, mining his mother's memory for all it's worth. And the point that's being made here and the point that I've brought up as well is that by doing this, you know, what he's trying to do is gain public sympathy and then, you know, trying to target the, the cool, the cold royal family and all this. But what's happening is Diana's leg legacy is becoming question 
and and Lady C points out it's it's being questioned in a way that it never would have been, per you know if she had been permitted to lay at rest. That's I think a criticism that a lot of us have is just let her rest. I I personally take issue. I mean I have so many issues with these two, but I think about Prince William who went through the same thing, and then he's having to deal with this. Not only the asshole brother and the sister-in-law from hell, he has to deal with his mother's memory being brought up for gain, I guess, for attempted financial gain by the idiot brother. I don't know. It just, it reeks. Much of this section is spent discussing how when they first left the royal family, people didn't know what they were getting involved with. So what I mean is they bought at face value what they were selling, this uniquely high profile type thing, the allure of royalty, okay? And then they showed themselves to be the lazy effing grifters that they are. <laughs> so Lady C goes into basically their stock took a huge plunge. Um, they have a lack of talent. They are indeed difficult to work with. And uh, apparently at first it was not as apparent as it is now. I would say... Mm, a lot of us saw it, but I get what she's saying. <laughs> but they just continue to expose themselves over and over. And, and they did it, of course, from everything from Oprah. We know everything they did, but, but it's continuing with the daily barrage of headline grabbing trivia. And <laughs> as Lady C puts it, wrapped up in a package of self-serving victimhood. That so nails it for me. Um, they Okay, so they're always going to have these admirers, and, and Lady C points out often it's among the young, quote, ignorant, unsophisticated, or naive. But even those numbers seem to be dwindling. The more you sell yourself out, the less desirable you become. You know, just thinking about this, what pops into my mind, I just, I get stuck on those parking lot pap walks. I think... There's so many ridiculous moments, it's hard to pick a favorite with those two, but I really think the parking lot walks have to be, well, I'd say the parking lot walk covered in stickers has to be one of the lowest of the lows, like walking around. Remember, she's trying to sell herself as a face of Dior around that time and covered herself in stickers and was potentially trying to sell those. I don't even know. I, I'm guessing was paid by the company maybe to try to sell those. It's just so ridiculous. And as a shock to no one, Lady C points out that the whole move to begin with was engineered by Megan and by Harry's own admission, she quote, opened his eyes to the fact that he was trapped but he had not seen it. <laughs> Thank God for Megan, right? I'm sure he says that daily that guy was worth 50 million dollars actually it would have been more but that's that's about the the um figure that lady c has about 50 million and then points out all the things that they would have gained staying in the royal family now i'm not suggesting they should have stayed i'm glad they left personally um but just to she says that to point out they, they even talk about seeking financial independence at 50 million dollars <laughs> <laughs> I can't wrap my head around those numbers. I would like to seek financial independence with $50,000. I don't know about you guys, but that would help. Um, just incredible when you see it pointed out like that and in, 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 in a print like that. Like, oh man, they really are. It's just to, it's not about helping anybody because if they had stayed, they had the opportunity to do that. It's about helping themselves and being obscenely wealthy. Another favorite passage of this section comes on page 415, again in chapter 10, where she points out that they are, quote, whining, complaining ingrates who are unappreciative of their good fortune while also being grossly insensitive, self-centered brats who are unrealistic enough to expect sympathy for their puerile problems from people who on a daily basis had to contend with far more real problems, such as finding the money to put food on the table, oftentimes by having to work unsatisfying jobs while struggling to juggle the demands that survival made upon them. I thought that was so well said, exactly embodies how so many of us are feeling. 
shall I say that again, whining great. <laughs> They're whining, complaining, and greats who are unappreciative of their good fortune while being self-centered brats. I think that's so well said and exactly how I feel about the both of them. Therein lies exactly what she's talking about in this chapter about how they're failing catastrophically because, well, of issues like this. Nobody wants to hear people who had everything whine about what exactly we're not even sure whine about everything it's so crazy i mean by their own admission which they've changed a million times they called the damn thing the freedom flight right so they act like they're escaping from this thing and then it's been a non-stop wine fest ever since and trying to make as much money as they can <laughs> by telling these same whiny stories and trying to get people to feel sorry for them. So I don't understand how they think that that is a long-term enduring thing. I agree with Lady C that at the beginning it had a certain, like, what are they going to say? What are they going to do? But at this point, they've said it. They've done it. I think the, their popularity ratings or lack thereof speak volumes. And to further drive this point home, which I love so much, uh, Lady C points out that, quote, Walmart Wallace, as Megan is now known, can't even land a deal promoting Walmart. <laughs> Again, I go back to it's been four years. What have they accomplished? We're, I keep seeing these rumblings. I never can find exact proof, but I would, I, I'm tending to believe that they've come to an end or they're about to come to an end of their deal or her deal with WME. And what do they have to show for it? What have they accomplished? Nothing but a bunch of false starts that, in my personal opinion, I believe were started by Megan. Again, I go back to the Dior of it all. That's a prime example. Putting out these rumors that Dior wants her to be the face to the point where Dior had to respond and say, no, no, not true. But that's one of a million examples. Think about, well, again, in real time, as I record this, we're finding out that uh, all these articles about this Limonada thing of hers, this podcast revamp, which is such a nightmare of an idea, by the way, because it flopped so bad the first time. What is there to revamp or revisit or redo? It doesn't make any sense. But then as I'm recording this again, I'm a few days ahead of when this will be released. There's articles out that say, oh, no, nope, that's had to be put on the back burner because of her, wait for it, jam business. <laughs> oh, you can't make this stuff up. It's just so silly at this point. So to further summarize this part of the book, Lady C wonders, as do I think a lot of us, will they stay together? Will they not? She doesn't go too hard into that, but she does suspect that regardless, of course, Megan will try to basically cling on to Archwell and make that more her thing and maybe tie it to some cause, I'm paraphrasing here, but tie it to some causes not to actually potentially, in my opinion, help people, but more to elevate herself or tie herself, you know, to certain people, trendy things, right? To get her name out there. That wouldn't shock me at all. She doesn't go into this speculation, but I'm going to speculate, as I've pointed out before, I suspect they will separate sooner than later. And then we'll get Megan's book, How I Survived, or whatever the hell it's going to be, like some sort of victimhood tail and she'll use doofus's own admissions in his book spare against him you know what i'm talking about substance issues against him mental health issues things like that i i just again it's not it's not going to help her at all it's not going to help him and who can, i mean they, it's again they're a disaster of their own making it would be i'd feel sorry for them if they weren't such shitbags the entire way i mean Again, they brought it upon themselves. Also worth noting as we wrap up this chapter is Lady C refers to Harry as a morose wet rag. <laughs> Without uh, Megan around, there are recognizable glimpses of Harry pre her. She points out that he can be engaging, lighthearted, seemingly enjoy himself. This is evident and she points to the, in September, that uh, Dusseldorf Invictus, before Megan got there, he seemed to be happy. And then, again, um, once she arrived with her milkshakes, remember that whole BS story, he hung back 
quote, like a limpet. Okay, let's talk about the part I don't want to talk about. As this book is wrapping up, Lady C drops another bomb. And I hate even dancing around it because it's despicable. But know that at the end of this book, it is put out there and explain, not even explained, hinted at. Because Lady C does a good job of protecting her sources. She says she doesn't want to be Harry and Spare, where he just throws people under the bus. So I appreciate that about her. But to relay this story is hard, but I'll, I'll give it a go. In a nutshell, this person, whomever they are, with good connections to both Harry and to Lady C, uh, again, according to Lady C, phoned her up and explained why Megan can never see her father again. It's the thing we've danced around before that allegedly Megan fed this story to Harry about the worst thing that a father, you know what I'm, you know where I'm going with this, disgusting things, it sounds like, um, accusations of, of a father, what they could do to the daughter. You know what we're talking about. It's horrible. I don't even like putting it out there, but, um, the reason I bring it up is because it is a part of this last section of the book. And basically it explains why they, there's so many reasons why I believe she clings on to Doria, but she has to cling on to Doria because she can never be back around Thomas. And uh, because Harry believes this alleged tale of what happened. So that's it. She can never make up with him. It's, icky for lack of a better word I don't want to talk about it I don't I don't even want to put it out there I will just say it it's not shocking to me uh I've talked about before it's my opinion my belief that that's exactly what she will say when he passes and no you know what I mean and he's not around to dispute things um, again, it could further go in her victim book. I don't know <laughs> that she writes after she leaves Harry. I, I, the whole thing is really gross and I don't, I don't even want to go there, but I do feel like it's important to bring up because it is a bombshell at the end of this book. I don't know how to switch off of that, but we're going to try, uh, <laughs> another interesting tidbit is that Lady C, of course, seriously doubts the, dollar amounts that have been thrown around um, in regards to their big deals. She doubts the hundreds of millions from Netflix, as do I, uh, nor tens of millions from Spotify. And she points out that Spare was most likely a financial success for him. She doesn't believe it actually was for Penguin Random House. And um, she just doesn't believe that, uh, that the numbers broadcasted about this, like making millions actually happened and then it the book ends with um lady c pointing out that you know people people that were supporting harry and megan or not anti i guess is a better way of saying it were hopeful that when they did you know the the brexit brexit megxit of it all um that they would find some success and then lady c points out that um well Character is destiny, and the results it ended up being more dreadful than even a pessimist could have feared. <laughs> so that's how that ends, and then we get the epilogue, and she does she did a great job here and talks about them. I mean, it was they opted for being perpetrators of destructiveness while posing as victims. They hide behind these vague unsubstantiated claims of Istwards and the royal family. They allowed others to fill in the blanks so that way it would cause maximum damage. And they conflict themselves often, right, with their statements. She goes on to say, had there actually been, to quote Harry, unconscious bias, um, then the only way that they should have proceeded would have been to address it privately. If they actually had the intention of of positive race relations, they could have handled it. That's not what they're trying to do. It's more about playing victim and making money. Here they were publicly showing how pissed they were 
that the press dare speculate about Megan's behavior, right, with in, in the bullying reports and everything else, and yet they run to the press. We know this. It's it's the same. It doesn't make any sense. They contradict themselves at every turn, but they run to the same press they pretend to hate and air every made-up grievance ever. Let's talk about something interesting that comes up in the epilogue. Um, talking about Lily. All right. we She does go into the name thing a little bit. It, I mean, there's that's not really new information. It's basically what we all suspect, which is they didn't get permission for that name. They duped the queen and, and made her believe that they could potentially name it Elizabeth, something along those lines, right? But then, oh, lo and behold, took the other name. I refuse to call the kid that, so I'm calling it Lily. All right, let's talk about Lily. The interesting part of this epilogue goes into something I didn't realize, which is after Lily was born, which they were able to avoid some speculations this go around. Remember, there were speculations as to what was going on under those dresses, that, Megan, that bump that Megan wouldn't let go of. What's happening there? Well, with the thing that happened in 2020... Uh, they were able to kind of hide out a little bit more. She points out the interesting thing, the biggest things to draw question marks to the Lily situation are the pictures that that idiot friend of theirs, photographer that came, I'll never forgive that guy for coming after the Sidley twins dad. Um, that guy took some pictures and that's what led to speculation saying, what the hell's going on her, under her dress? Because if you remember, I'm not even going to show the pictures because they belong to I'm not going to get into that. Anyway, um, but that she's like wildly pregnant laying down under that tree, right? And then come to find out she still had like four months to go. It doesn't make any sense. You can't make that make any sense. They just think, in my opinion, whatever's going on under that dress, they think they can outsmart everyone. But now, finally, other people, we've seen it for a while, but other people are starting to see it and go, what? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense at all. And then to me, I I'm I'm digressing here on going on this tangent. Think about Spare and his coverage of it. I talked about this. Like, it doesn't make any sense. The birth stories don't make any sense. All right. But continuing on, the interesting part to me is this. So they put out this message saying, you know, uh, yeah, our daughter was born, all this stuff. Okay. Well, then the the palace put out. Let me find it and read it to you. Here we go. The formal announcement. Okay. Ready? The Queen, the Prince of Wales, the Duchess of Cornwall, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have been informed and are delighted with the news of the birth of a daughter for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. So think about that. So they're delighted with the news of the birth of a daughter for them. So that wording, all right, I have to dance around this. No, I don't. Allegedly, right? Allegedly. If they used a surrogate, if, <laughs> um, then that is interesting wording that would match the possibility of if they used a surrogate. I think that's so interesting. I never paid attention to that wording before. Maybe that's on me, but did you guys know that? So with the news of a birth of a daughter for the Duke and D Duchess of Sussex, maybe I'm putting too much emphasis on that for, but that sure is interesting to me. Well, according to Lady C, Harry and Meghan went ballistic because it possessed the undeniable implication that the baby had not been born to Meghan, but had been born for the couple. Dun, dun, dun. I need to know all the details. Is that what, is that? Did, is that what happened? <laughs> no, I don't mean I believe in the surrogate thing, but I'm saying like, that's interesting if that's, if that wording's on purpose and uh, Lady C believes it is. And now I'm inclined to think so too. To take an even more interesting view of this, think about this. Okay. So Megan was trying to claim that she had been forced to change Archie's birth certificate. Um, and she, according to Lacey, she was very cleverly setting up the situation so down the line she could claim the royal family had been complicit with this cover-up that they knew nothing about. You see where I'm going with this. If this surrogacy happened, then they had been... She, she can then claim, oh, they knew about it, but by them stating it like this, they're trying to separate themselves and 
no, they're not cooperating with this situation. Basically, it's explained that Megan played this out and then hid under HIPAA rules. And so they're kind of bound by the fact that they were able to get these birth certificates, then the palace has to include them in the line of succession. I'm I'm hesitant about this part because I get pissed off too, and I I don't understand that at all. We're talking the palace here, the royal family. If everybody else has to go through these ways of proving that you know, the kids in the line of succession are, if they all have to go through the hell, then why doesn't Megan, right? And and besides, forget all that for a second. I, again, normal circumstances, who cares how the kids get here? They're your kids. I understand that. And I also understand line of succession, we're dealing with something different. But they're not royals anymore. They stepped away. So what are we doing? Why? Why do the kids even need to be included? And why do these dimwit... I know why they insist on it. But at face value, let's play that game. If they're like, oh, everybody's the is words, why are they insisting on it anyway? You know why? Because everything they say is full of shit. They, they can't tell the truth if their life depends on it. So there's that. All right. And the whole book wraps up by pointing out that they fail to appreciate that they've chiseled themselves into the public's consciousness as the, quote, two biggest complainers of the age. They're perpetrators who have tried to pass themselves off as victims, and the irony of ironies in the process have turned themselves into the ultimate victims of their own failings. How do you beat that, right? <laughs> so well said, exactly how I feel. Such a great book. And then we had, at the very end, Plates, which is just... Um, pictures that supported some of her, you know, stories in the book. They're all pictures we've seen, pictures from the wedding, things like that. Um, pictures from engagements, pictures like that, um, that potential baby bump falling right in the purple dress, things like that. So that's how the book ends. Again, I'm so glad I covered it. I really enjoyed this so much. So well written. I can't say enough good things about it. I hope you enjoyed this as well. Um, it's been so fun to recap all of this and, and go back through it all with you. I will put together a super cut of all the chapters in case you want more and you want to see, you want it all put together, I will do that. So look for that. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for being here. If there's another book you want me to discuss, leave it in the comments. I can't wait to bring you more stuff like this. I hope you all have the best day. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.